So you want to build a SaaS? Fantastic. Just whip up a landing page, hook up Stripe, and wait for the money printer to start. Easy, right? It's what every second Twitter thread will tell you. Just ship fast, validate, iterate. But let's be real. Building a SaaS is less of a startup fantasy and more of a psychological endurance sport. On the surface, it looks like the ultimate indie hacker dream. Work in your pajamas, make recurring revenue in your sleep, hit $10,000 MRR, and post screenshots of it with a what a journey caption. In reality, you'll spend more time debugging broken billing webhooks and responding to support emails from people who forgot their passwords three times in a row than actually building new features. Let's start with what you think you're signing up for. The dream is simple. Solve a problem, ship a solution, and let the subscription dollars roll in. What you get instead is endless decisions, compromises, and surprises, some technical, some human, all exhausting. One week you're working on a killer feature, the next you're trying to figure out why some random user in Brazil keeps getting 502 errors only when using Internet Explorer on a Tuesday. And don't even get me started on the scope creep. Every user has a quick request. Go, in and out, 20 minutes adventure. And before you know it, your clean MVP turns into a bloated Frankenstein app trying to be everything to everyone. Technically, SaaS is a grind. You're not just building a product, you're building infrastructure. Authentication, authorization, role-based access, data separation between tenants, rate limiting, monitoring, uptime guarantees, all the boring stuff that no one claps for. You dreamt of a sleek app with a React front end and a slick back end API. What you get is you, knee deep in Stripe docs, rewriting your webhook handler for the fourth time because a test refund triggered your failover system. Sure, you've got an app, but now you're also running a business critical service with SLAs you made up in your privacy policy at 2 a.m. And the money part? Oh, buddy. Just charge $10 a month, they said. All you need is 1,000 customers. Cool. Now go find them. Most SaaS founders realize real fast that customer acquisition is where dreams go to die. You'll burn through your Twitter followers in week one, pay for ads that convert at 0.3%, and then wonder why everyone churns after the trial. And even when you get paying users, guess what? You're on the hook. You're now the support rep, success manager, dev team, and marketing lead, all rolled into one burnt-out founder trying to keep the lights on and the LTV high enough to justify the CAC you blew on a failed Facebook ad campaign. Speaking of marketing, it's not optional. It's the whole game. No one cares about your clever architecture or your pixel-perfect UI if they don't know you exist. I don't care! You'll spend more time writing landing page copy, cold emailing leads, tweeting into the void, and begging for feedback on indie forums than you will writing code. The Indie Hacker Handbook will tell you to launch on Product Hunt, but they won't tell you that it's a one-day sugar rush followed by 29 days of wondering why your active user count is dropping faster than your motivation. Then comes the real pain, customer support, operations, and maintaining your own sanity. You wanted to build features. Now you're updating GDPR compliance docs, writing refund policies, and debating whether to implement SSO because one user with a .gov email won't shut up about it. And the tickets, oh, the tickets. Why can't I log in? How do I change my plan? I click the button and nothing happened. You start dreaming about modal dialogues and reset password flows. You live in the backend logs. Your app is running fine, but your soul is in a crash loop back off. And just when you think you've got your little SaaS engine running smoothly, along comes AI, not just as a competitor, but as a requirement. Uh, every dev tool, every dashboard, every analytics platform now has AI powered, slapped onto it like a badge of honor. Your customers start asking why your app doesn't auto-complete their tasks, write their reports, or answer their emails. AI isn't a product anymore. It's a layer, woven into every part of the stack whether you like it or not. From writing support replies to suggesting features, it's everywhere. You can't just ship a SaaS now. You have to ship one that's intelligent, fast, insightful, and AI-aware. It's the new normal. So, should you build a SaaS? Maybe. If you like chaos, context switching, and existential dread, but also the thrill of building something real that people actually pay for. If that sounds like your thing, maybe you should use the WAP App Store, the sponsor of today's video. As I said, if you want to build a SaaS or any other kind of tech product, getting users is the hardest part. You build something solid, then what? No distribution. That's where WAP comes in. Ooh, let me have some of that cool whip. What'd you say? WAP is a community platform where creators sell your app for you. You list your app on the WAP app stores. Creators install it into their WAP and promote it directly to their audience. One big creator can mean thousands of paying users instantly. WAP handles payments, authorization, and distribution all in one place. You build the product, creators bring the audience. Check it out at WAP.com developers. Thank you for sitting through yet another tech rant, and if you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe to become a fellow codehead.